in the tank is a product in the health and wellness space. What's going on, sharks? My name is Alexio Gibson. I was born and raised in the Bahamas, and I am here seeking $500,000 for 5% equity in my company. Ooh. Now, I'm a pretty healthy guy, but I wasn't always this way. In fact, when I was 21 years old, I weighed over 500 pounds Dang. and wow. was told that I wouldn't live to see 30. So I knew that I needed to do something right away to get my life back. I started working out more, eating healthy, and even went vegan, Mark Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> so during my transformation, I found a nutritionist ingredient that had 90% of the minerals that our human bodies need, and I incorporated it into my life every single day. Now, what is it? It's called sea moss. Sea moss is a powerhouse marine algae that exists in our oceans and has 90% of the essential minerals that our human bodies have. I wanted everyone to have this product so that they can become the best versions of themselves as well, which is why I created the Transformation Factory, a line of mouth-watering sea moss gels that you can take and get 90% of your nutrients with two tablespoons every day. So tell me, Sharks, who's ready to transform the world with me and see nothing but green in the future? <laughs> that was a great Now, pitch. Sharks, in the front of you, you have our mouth-watering line of sea moss gels for you to try yourself. You'll be tasting our mango, strawberry banana, pineapple, dragon fruit, and last but not least, our elderberry. The strawberry tastes very good. It's almost like um, jam or jelly. Yes. More like a smoothie. It tastes more like a smoothie. So sea moss has 90% of the essential minerals that our human bodies need to function. So you have zinc, boron, you have iodine that treats thyroids, and it also treats the gut. The gut is where our immune system lives. Mm. The only sweetener in this is agave, organic agave syrup. Alexios, you said you lost 300 pounds? Yes, I did. How did you do that, and what was that like? Well, I remember reading an article that, you know, some weight loss contestants on, on different reality shows worked out four to six hours a day. And I told myself as a personal challenge, I'm like, man, these people are as big as I am. Some of them are twice my age. What's my excuse? I can do six hours, let's do this. Wow. I became obsessed with becoming the best version of myself. I would literally be on the elliptical and I'd be envisioning what, what does a, a, a more healthy version of myself wow. look like, a more confident Good version? Good for you. And I started chasing that guy in my, in my mind. Very, very strong. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Thank Seriously. Thank you, guys. Thank um, you. What are your sales right now? Right now, we are at 3.5 million sales to date. Whoa. Wow. We started 11 months ago. Wow. Holy cow. How are you distributing it to get that kind of trajectory? So uh, the way this actually started, my 80-year-old grandmother was visiting from the Bahamas who has a lot of core mobilities and taking medication, so I knew I wanted to protect her. I would put this in her coffee every morning. I was sharing stories on my Instagram story, just showing like CMOS lattes every eight o'clock in the morning, and I'll give it to grandma. And they're like, I know what CMOS is. I keep hearing about it. Can I please stop by and get some? I'm a registered nurse. I'm in the COVID wing. And I'm like, absolutely. You, you ladies are soldiers. Come over, grab it. We, we didn't charge. <laughs> and I was giving this away for free, not even thinking that it could have been a business. And it wasn't until I was getting about 60 orders a week, I said, why don't I open an online store to make the process simpler? It exploded. From there, we started running ads. We started getting more SEO traction. We had an 800% growth from February to March when we started uh, running ads, and people knew that we existed. Did you make any money on the 3.5 million in sales? Yes, we have about 35% profit margin. That's we, what so you, you made a million dollars in profit? Yeah, 1.4 million. We poured a lot of it back into the business, That's fine. but we have extremely healthy cash flow. And is it all still direct to consumer? It's direct to consumer, 100% online. So I'm curious what you'd use our money for. So the, the way I would use the money is I actually want to have a transformation factory where we have the ingenuity and the machines to uh, shelf stabilize our products. You want to do that to get on retail shelves, right? Yes, we want to get on retail shelves. How much are you selling each bottle for? So an eight, eight ounce raw CMOS sells for $24.99. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. This is $24.99? Yes, $24.99. Oh. But you only use two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. You don't need the whole no, jar. But... <laughs> and what does it cost you to make it? The cost for the smallest jar is $4.15. Well, that's wow. good margins. Yes. That's great yes. margins. So how are you dealing with this when you manufacture it? How are you making sure it's clean, safe, pure? 
Great question. So because this comes from outside of the United States, it has to be FDA cleared and cleared by customs to even enter for consumption. Why would anybody pay $24.99 for a tiny bottle of what looks like baby food? How did they learn about this? This is a culturally driven product, it right? Is. In our community, African American community, this is something that is now being raved about and we're seeing growth in okay. it. So I've actually purchased it and it was in a plain jar and it was like an exclusive buy. It almost felt like a drug deal, I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> I, said, I, said, I know somebody that can get you some. And I was like, all right, I'll try it. So everything that you're saying, yes. I do know to be true. What I'm most intrigued about are your numbers. Do you have other investors? Or partners right I now? I am a sole, sole owner. Good for wow. you, baby. Wow. We never I have no loans. I have no debt. Being first generation entrepreneur and everything, this is where I do need help. To where I, you know, I really want a strong financial background and a system. That's one area that I would love to be extremely. Then why tight are you only giving us five percent? And why that's did a, you ask for five hundred thousand dollars? Because you don't need the cash, and you know, if you need that much help and guidance, five percent is not going to get us excited. So you know, I just I'm very flexible in that. I'll tell you what I'm looking for the most is I want to work directly with, with one of you, you know? I just want to be a sponge and keep growing as an excellent CEO. I gotta and be honest, man. For me, you're, you're checking so many of the boxes. Me being a health and wellness guy, I can understand how this can fit in my other verticals. There's tons of things that I'm now getting my hands into. Something like this could be of interest. Yes. I, I don't see 5% doing it for me. I'm going to ask for 20%. I think that you're gonna need a significant amount of help in building the infrastructure to run your business. Can I tell you something? I was gonna make an offer of 20% as well. I think that's a fair price. And I think I have the expertise to help out in a real meaningful way. So then if that's the case, Barb, then if you want to, we split the 20%, we keep the offer at 500,000 and we go 10 to 10. Great idea. That's our offer. I wanna thank you, Barbara and Kevin, so much for your first initial offer. I do wanna give the Sharks an opportunity to hear uh, their offers Understood. as well. Understood. I like that much. first initial offer. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> okay, well, let me give you my first Did initial I say that? offer. Okay, and tell you, you what I do with fine. this. I'm really intrigued. I love revenue. I love cash flow even more. You got both, so that's really impressive. Yes. Uh, I'm going to ask for more, actually. I'm going to give you the 500000 for 30%, and then I'm going to put Chef Wonderful behind it, and I'm going to sell it direct. I sell millions of dollars of sous vide cakes, wines, spices, you name it. None the of that has anything to do with the Seamal's work. I'm not doing it for 20% because the amount of work in setting this up and actually fulfilling to a giant direct-to-consumer play like QVC is really, really challenging. Alexia, yes. I'm gonna, I've had an offer on the table way okay. too long. All Tell right. me right so, now um, if you would like to move forward or not. Thank you very much, Kevin and Barbara. I love the fact that you guys are interested. What I would say is 20% uh, is a huge amount for 500,000. They do the 30% offer instead. Based on our current sales, you know, we're, we're doing over half a million a month in sales. Our profit margins are great. There's a lot of room for growth. We've managed to do this on our own. And you there's hope. so many things you hope, that we have You hope, because you don't know what you don't know. Right. Alexia, you with all due respect, you yes, sound like you really need our help and expertise, particularly when you want to make a left-hand turn into the retail space. Yep. Yes, yes. We know how to not tell you what to do. You're the majority shareholder. Yes. But we can certainly weigh in on what's wise and what our experience has Absolutely. been to, have, to help you make a better decision. Yes. I, I don't imagine you could go anywhere else where you could get uh, the notoriety that this character to my right, this cutie yes. pie right here. Yes. Thank you, Barbara. It. Thank you. Not you, not you. <laughs> Well, I was 100% agree with you. My, my kind of offer of, to Kevin and Barbara would be for 20%, $800,000 in the company. We can use like that, that to move into I uh, love in you numbers. so much, and it sounds so juicy, but no thank you. Kevin. Barb, are you interested in countering back and going to 600 and staying at 20%? I honestly feel $500,000 with the help Kevin. he needs is the right number. I'll do it with you at that price. OK. If, if you want to go at 600, right? Yes. And keep it at 20%. Yes. I'm telling you, I, I truly do believe that there's a significant value in what you have here. Yes. And I do honestly believe in your growth potential and also you as a business person. I'm sold on you. Yes. You're going to need people that have relationships. I know that if Mark aligns himself with me, that makes whoever I want to get on the phone what? even what that much faster. Because you don't want to go over 500. I said I you would go to 600. You said you didn't want to go to 600. But you didn't even take a breath. Now I'm jealous. <laughs> Well, that's business, Barb. You is know, he, like I know, you Barb, can't think about it. Is he still a cutie pie? 
No, not at all. So now you have an offer yes. where it's so Mark Alexio, and Alexio, Kevin what do you for want to do? You I, do us for I, I love that offer. Mark, I'm a huge fan. We're both vegan. I love it. Uh, 600,000, 20% to work with both of you would be incredible. You guys have a deal. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Congrats on what you accomplished. Hey, man, Thank your you. account is big things. Big, big things, man. Thank you. Love your story. Yes, Love you. your story. Love your business mind. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mr. Wonderful, Lori, yeah. and Barbara. It. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yes. Making a deal with Mark and Kevin is incredible, and growing my business with them is a dream come true. Yeah, I got a deal. <laughs> yeah, baby. Hey, Kev, you just drowned Barbara in the ocean. <laughs> well, I didn't drown oh Barbara God, in the ocean. I, I wanted Barbara. Got got away from me so fast. I wanted Barbara as a partner there, but Barbara didn't Whoa. want to go up. And, and he's and a rock solid guy. What a guy, honestly, yeah. though. Guy. I, I think a story behind a product makes a product that much better. Next up is a stylish way to show your school spirit. and I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> I'm the owner of Tones of Melanin. I'm seeking $300,000 for 5% equity into my business. Hello. So Sharks, for years, thousands of students, faculty, and alumni from historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs, have been underrepresented when it comes to fashion. They're tired of a dazzle t-shirt and polo being their only option for years. Tones of Melanin is here to fill that void. Tones of Melanin has combined streetwear and collegiate wear together to create its own genre of fashion. Today, we have over 40 different HBCU licenses. What makes us so unique is that we come from the community that we serve. Tones of Melanin has become bigger than just fashion. We've become the hub for all things HBCU. So, Sharks, who's ready to change collegiate wear forever? Give it up for my band! Woo! <laughs> some of my signature items. Mark, you have our reversible basketball shorts with pockets. Ladies, like we that. know that we have to have pockets in all items. So if you turn that thing inside out, it's a whole nother pair. I like it. Thank you. Right here, we have our Winston-Salem half-zip windbreaker. In front of you, Mr. Wonderful, is our reversible satin jacket. So if you unzip that, it's gonna turn into a whole nother side. Lori, you have our other windbreaker. It's a full zip. It gives you a, a blast from the past, a 90s feel. And Damon, you also have our reversible jacket from my alma mater, Norfolk State University. Nice quality. How much does it cost you to make and how much do you sell it for? The jacket that you have right there, uh, we get it for 28. We sell it um, on our site for 110. We sell it to the department store for 56. Uh, the reversible shorts right there, we get for 20. We sell it to the department store for 48. They sell it for 100. Um, our reversible jackets, we pay $30 for that. We charge 165. How did you start to do this and, and what's your background? So I designed from early high school into college. It became a side hustle. I began designing for every organization on campus. And I seen there that nothing looked like the things that I was designing. So I decided to start my own brand. At the beginning, I was doing Greek apparel, and then I decided to make HBCU apparel because I seen that there was a bigger need in that community. And how many HBCUs are, you know, historical black colleges, universities, how many of those exist? Depending on the person, some might say 100, some might say 102. And you have 40 licenses already yes. in existence, so that's great. You have almost half of them, right? Yes, um, but the thing is, I've gotten my, um, our license for everybody that allows it. The other schools, they don't have licensing programs in place. They um, don't have licensing yes. programs in that place? That might be an opportunity for you right there. Absolutely. So. A very big, the number one shoemaker in the world has just invested, I think, a couple billion over 15 years to HBCUs. Yes. So this is a very, very hot and fast growing area. I tell you what gets me hot to try to sales. Yes. What do you got? <laughs> 
Uh, to date, we made 3.3 million since. Whoa. Whoa. That's over what period of time? <laughs> since 2017. So what have you sold the last 12 months? The last 12 months, we're at 1.4 million. Wow. Can you walk me through this calendar year sales and potential profits? Um, and how they break down online versus retail? Okay, um, this calendar year so far, we've made about $1.1 million. That equals up, I wanna say, maybe 75%. Um, the rest are e-commerce. Uh, we're currently in Dick's Sporting Goods, Follette with services, uh, wow. 25 of the HBCU bookstores, and also on Fanatics. Literally two days ago, I got a purchase order from Follette for $973,000 for our fall. Wow. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> how exciting. So, are you going to make money this year? Uh, yes, what we are. What do you think you'll make? To date, we revenue, we have 343000 that we made this year from the one point. Uh, okay, one so point. you've profited about 25% so yes. far. You've got a purchase order for 973 coming in. Yes, sir. Plus, you've got all your other sales that are also, coming. Also, we have more department stores. How are you financing them? Um, we have a really good manufacturer. He allows for us to pay him after we get wow. our payment. Now, this is very creative, and this is what, in our business, we call the factories holding the paper. Yes. That's what we called it, right? And a lot of people can learn from this. So you were able to scale because he's doing that. So what would the money be used for then? Um, the money would be used for, uh, we're actually in-house. We have a five person team. So once they get here, we have to tag them all that. I want to go into fulfillment and having a 3PL company tag it, getting it ready for department stores to make sure that that's well, ready. But you don't have to pay for a 3PL per se. You find a good 3PL and then you send them the inventory and then you only pay as they pick sure. the pack. Yes. We would also use it for marketing. We've only um, spent $50,000 in marketing. But do you need to spend anything on marketing? I honestly believe that we do because all the stores that we're in, we're not even, we don't have like a key a key place in the store. We actually wanted those other schools that we don't have licensing for, convincing them, hey, choose us. Yeah, marketing won't change their mind. The sell-through will. Okay, yeah. Are you running this yourself? Yes, I'm head designer. I'm talking to the manufacturers. This is your baby and you're running it day-to-day -day, or is there a separate CEO? Or no, I'm day-to-day. -day. You're everything, every, right? Every head, every head. Ashley, I have to ask you this. I mean, your enthusiasm, your confidence is it's huge. It's amazing. Thank you. And amazing. Can you please tell us a bit more about your story? Like, where did this come from? My grandparents had one of the first African-American beauty supplies companies in our area. So I seen entrepreneurship firsthand. And then when I turned 13, when my mom worked for the Ford Company subsidiary, they left North Virginia. So I went into hustle mode and it was like, I could at least pay for me to go pay for lunch for myself. I can pay to get my hair done. So it just, it became second nature, to be honest. You had to take care of you. Yes, yes. And it wasn't, my mom never asked this. I just wanted to help. Like, I know I can do this for myself. Like, I can handle this. You don't worry about that, mom. You're hot stuff. You don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. Actually, you've got to be putting money in your pocket right now. Not yet. You're um, investing in inventory continuously. Everything is going right back into the business. You're not making a salary? You don't pay yourself anything? I pay myself next to nothing. I'm still trying to get... How I are you to, surviving? Uh, I have a great community. My family, my mom, she believes in me. That is really mind-blowing. Problem for me, I don't know much at all about this area. I am not really and never have really been much in the apparel world, nor in the sports. And, you know, I understand. It's not really my thing. And so for that reason, I wish you good luck, but I'm out. I appreciate it. Thank you. You are on fire. Thank you. But this isn't a business I know a thing about, sadly enough. Ashley, I look at it as a inventory challenge because the bigger you get, the more capital you're gonna need to hold all these different SKUs and more licenses, more SKUs, more inventory, more capital. That's what I've learned about the clothing business. It's not a business I wanna be in, I'm sorry. I'm out. Thank you. The challenge I have is I, I'm, I'm in this area in certain aspects. I, I either advise or own companies in this area. Eastman Golf and Actively Black, FUBU, and then another company you may know of, AACA. I'm okay, yes, yes, I'm familiar. Name. So I, I would, uh, it would be challenging me to split hairs like this, and I don't think I would be giving you, doing a service, but I will give you one idea. Instead of having, trying to go to a lot of retailers, we've had one representative young man and one representative young woman at each school who are the official sellers of the goods, and they get maybe $1,000, $2,000 worth of product and sell it however they want, and they've been doing it like that, I would highly suggest you do that. But at this moment, it's a conflict for me. I so, appreciate yeah, your advice. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm out. Thank you.
So, Ash, you're a superstar. You're a force of nature. You know your stuff cold. I mean, you didn't back down. You kept a smile the whole time. Nobody phased you even the tiniest bit. <laughs> and, you know, being in the business I am with the Mavericks, I know a few people that, you know, are excited about all this. So I'll make you an offer. We'll okay. see if you like it. I'll give you the $300,000, but I want 15%. Can we do 12? Done. <laughs> that was quick. Good job. You're the best. Thank You're you. the best. That's Thank awesome. You. I'm so excited. Thank you. Excited, excited, excited. Thank you. Now go sell some stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Make me some money. I made a deal with Mark Cuban, like one of the biggest sharks there is. I provide a beacon of hope. If I made it and I went to an HBCU, I'm providing the sense of hope for anybody that attended an HBCU. Next up is an entertainment company with representation as a mission. Hi, Sharks. I'm Manuel. And I'm Giselle. And I'm Turnus. And we are Black Sands Entertainment. We're currently seeking $500,000 for 5% of our company, <laughs> Sharks. America loves entertainment, be it movies, television, anime, or comics. There has never been more content than there is today. But there is still a struggle to find content and characters that represent the black community's historical achievements before slavery. That's why we created Black Sands Entertainment. Black Sands is one of the only successful black-owned publishing houses in America, and it all started with the flagship title, Black Sands, The Seven Kingdoms. And after 100,000 copies sold, we knew a legend had been born. Wow. Our sales are phenomenal. But one thing that can take a $1 million publishing IP and turn it into a billion dollar licensing and merchandising IP is to make it into an animated series. We are here to give black and brown creators a place to tell their stories and shine a spotlight on the rich history of our people. So Sharks, who, who is ready, ready to, to join, join the Black Sands family? Ooh, okay. Please sit back, relax. We're gonna give you a little taste of the future of Black Sands Entertainment. How long has he trained you? I did not train him. I took him into the wilderness for five years. He has survived. I forbid this battle. You will stop nothing. Damn it, brother. Why must you be like this all the time? Asar, you need to think this through. There is nothing to think about. Black Sands, you can read it and watch it. Now let's go. <laughs> all right, well, you know what? I'm gonna start here, and not just because I'm black, but because I understand the value behind IP, the want and need for it. Um, what's the cost that you put into this so far? So our animated property, which is an eight minute pilot, is 250,000. And Turnus is the expert in that. Here's our head of studio. Is this all self-engineered, self-developed? Yeah, like I've been in the business like 25 plus years. Wow. I've been with Disney, Pixar, like major studios. And I left all that to join Black Sands because it's something I really believe in. And mm -hmm. what I saw was like a real winner. How are you creating a revenue stream? Most of our revenue stream is physical books. That's what we do. Um, currently, we're on pace to do about 120,000 units this year. Direct to consumer? Direct to consumer. And what do you sell them for? So we sell that one for, it costs $2 at landing, $20 retail, and $8 wholesale. Good for you. $20 retail, is that a typical retail price? That is a typical retail price. Um, you mentioned comic books as well. We have a lot of comic books. We have 12 titles that are currently signed to Black Sands. The one that you currently have in your hand is our flagship title, which makes the bulk of our money. So from comic book one to now, what has been the progression of sales that have gotten you guys to that number of 120,000? Um, in our first year, we did about $40,000 in sales. We just started in 2017. In 2018, we did about 220,000 in sales. Uh, 2018, we raised capital for um, a DVD. We built that. In 2020, we had 600,000 in sales. This year, we're at 800,000 in sales. Year to date. Yeah, year to date. Manuel and Giselle, what's your backgrounds? So I'm a military veteran. I mm -hmm. serve in, in the Army. Thank, Thank you for your service. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we took that military background, me and my husband. So and you're we, married? Yes, we are. Did you know anything about animation, anything about comic books? We didn't books? know anything, but with the military background, we knew how to execute and manage a business. And who created the stories? 
Manuel. I'm a big entertainment guy. I constantly see the same Egyptian story flop over and over again in the industry. They're very detached from the historical setting, and so I said I'm gonna make my own story about Egypt. I'm gonna put everybody in the Middle East into it, so we got Spartans, Minoans, Canaanites. You got the whole Bible right there, yeah, right? You got the whole, you got the whole yeah. Middle East involved. Educators, they love this stuff. So, so the next big question is your profitability and cash burn. This year, we're 108,000 in the green. How much cash do you have in the bank? 300,000. Uh, to Kevin's point on leveraging IP, where do you see the series going, right? You've got to have a place you like to see it because it's not a traditional television Absolutely. type thing. So we are eventually going to find a distributor, right? Let me stop you right there. Just, um, I act as a one-stop shop. I'm, I'm a distributor. I'm a production hub. Um, $500,000 is a, is a lot. What are you using the money for? So the money that we're gonna get, um, you know, when we get this deal, right, is to expand the production Just like of Black that, Sands. you're gonna get that deal. Man, you always got confidence, I like, I like it. I like that, I like it. I'm telling I you right that. now, we do eight issues a year. We will massively expand it. We'll probably get to 30 different issues a year, including pumping out at least a full season of the main title and all these ridiculously lovable characters in the series, they get their own series. See, but when I, when I ask you that question, I'm, I'm expecting a clear answer. Tell me where you're spending the money. That's what I need to know. Hiring artists to basically build this pipeline. I need writers too and everything else. These artists are like $30,000, $40,000 each every single year. All right, guys, I do understand what you're doing and I understand the world. The 5% is, that's ridiculous. I'm gonna throw that out the window. That can't happen. I mean, you're asking for an investment and you're asking for uh, the added value and you creating IP. So I'm just gonna tell you the value I feel like I'm bringing to you before I give you my offer, okay? I own distribution in the world of audio. Yes. I own distribution in the world of television. Because of my ecosystem and what I know we can bring to the table, I see the significant value in just a brand. And if you have a brand and you're already moving product in that brand, that's a value to me. Because if you do strike gold in this space and you get to the world of toys, et cetera, well, this can be a, this can be a money maker. Oh, I just cursed, I'm sorry. This can be, <laughs> Whoa, this, this can be a money maker. So I am going to put an offer on the table. Wait, can I get in there? Of course you can. You tell me if you like where I'm at, okay? okay. You're asking for $500,000 and you're saying we want it because we want to bring in the other people to help create. We already have that. We already have those people. So you're not paying for that necessarily because you'll be accessing mine. Kev, I'll help on the technology, right? Okay. I'll help on the online distribution side of it. Okay. But you've got the whole pathway. In you're... this case, I've never been more comfortable yeah, about, taking, about taking an asset and being able to bring value to an asset. This is what I do. You're the green light that they need in order to get to the next level, right? Look, you got $500,000 on the table, but we want 30%. All sharks are still in. Mark and Kevin Hart are interested in animation company Black Sands, but they want a much bigger stake in the company than the 5% they came in offering. This is what I do. You're the green light that they need in order to get to the next level, right? Look, you got $500,000 on the table, but we want 30%. And I, and I think that's more than fair. Can I counter? Yeah. You're I nuts. Of course. course. Y'all tell me if I'm crazy or not. $500,000 for 10% between the two of you and perpetuity on books, 25 cents per hardcover, the royalty deal. No, that's not what this Thank is goodness about. I'm here. No, because you know as well as I do, the grand slam doesn't come from making per book. It's when this gets picked up for a movie and turns into a franchise uh, and he's the producer. I'll give you Look, last example. I'll take the royalty. <laughs> I'll give you, here, here's the last example, okay? This is, this is where my creative mind goes as a CEO. What I'm telling you is that my 30% ask is not because of the hypothetical opportunity. I'm embedding you into my system. I understand 100%. But I raised capital on that last valuation. And, and, and to but literally go six times How much have you higher, raised? I raised a million dollars, and the last 500 was at 5%. Yeah, but that's it, not the it's point. Just, it's just, I think it's the just... problem here is there's partners, and then there's partners. Get the difference? Some partners aren't created equal. And, and when you tell your investors mm -hmm. who you just brought in, it's not about the valuation that they paid. It's the valuation of where it's going so they can get a return, right? And by the way, 
I would not be asking for this particular number if you didn't have to access my real resources. You said we're gonna get some creative people to come in, new animation, new stories. I have that. Okay. That engine is already working, it's already pumping. You're tapping into an ecosystem that exists. Okay, my fans, they want this done. They do. So you guys got a deal. That's it. Let's go. That's it. It's a game of IP. All right? I didn't know you were this Thank you. Let's do a TikTok. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's go. Awesome. Yes. He said, hey, investors will, will get over it. Let's yes. go, man. What this means is there's going to be a Black Sands anime hitting the top 10 list on the world. Yes. Period.